Sarah, we know police have already confiscated everything from bear spray to shields to metal and wooden poles. What's happening there now? Looks like things are relatively peaceful behind you. They are peaceful. I mean, what you have is the police basically separated uh, folks from the Proud Boys and, and who came for that. And the, the leftist groups like Antifa, they're on literally the other side uh, of the river. Um, I have with me one of the one of the chairman of Proud Boys, Enrique Tarrio, um, who is here. Um, why, why did you come to Portland? Why was this brought forward? Because I do want to mention the fact that Joe Biggs said some pretty violent stuff on Twitter before saying death to Antifa, bring your guns. And that really ratcheted things up and made people feel very nervous here that there was going to be violence brought to by you, by your group, to this city. Okay, so first and foremost, we came over here to raise awareness for domestic terrorism. Now, that's not just for Antifa. That includes the shooting that happened in El Paso, the shooting that happened in Dayton, Ohio, the attempted firebombing in Tacoma, Washington, and uh, the shooting at the ICE facility in San Antonio. I mean, I could go on, but um, that's what we came here to do. Um, we've been planning this for two months. The straw that broke the camel's back was uh, the attack on Andy Noah, independent journalist that was just trying to document um, Antifa, and he got uh, brain hemorrhage from it. So, uh, so, and I just want to mention that was last, that was in June, so that just, was in a, June. just a month ago. But before that, in May, there was another melee, if you will, and some of the members of, of, of a right group that, that follows you guys and that tends to show up for these things, Patriot Player, one of their people just got arrested, turned himself in, mm -hmm. Joey Gibson, um, for writing. And so do you think this is a problem that both the right-wing groups and the left bring to the fore? Absolutely not, especially here in Oregon. You have Patriot Prayer that went to go practice their First Amendment rights. If you look at that video, Joey was spit on, pepper sprayed. Um, I think Ted Wheeler needs an ax to grind, and we're not going to be that group. So that's why we came here today. Um, I don't un I, and explain to me, I don't understand why you're showing up. Is it to antagonize no. the mayor or the city? Because there are people here, people of color in particular who I've talked to, that feel like they're being terrorized because of some of the language that is used by groups like yours mm -hmm. um, against them. And, and, and you all have a history also in Manhattan. There is a case right now where there's videos out there of 10 members of your group or people that are around they, your group. They, they, who, they went ahead and they threw a glass bottle That's not the way the city. That's fine. That's, that's not the, the way thing. the city. The, the political same powers thing. of the governor and the mayor of, of New York, same thing that Ted Wheeler wants to do. I've had a, an open communication, open dialogue with uh, Portland PD for the past month. And then here we are. There was two different stories. There was Portland PD's story and Ted Wheeler's story. And again, Ted Wheeler needed an axe to grind. So what we did is we came. Our message was bold today. Our message wasn't, we didn't stay there. We didn't antagonize anybody. We, we held our hands in prayer. We bent a knee. And then we went ahead and we left. We sent our message with zero violence. What is the message that you are trying to send? Because a lot of people see the message as one of uh, intolerance, xenophobia, racism. What is the message that well, you are trying well, to actually send? Well, just a second ago, you mentioned people of color, right? Yeah. And you said, and I'm a person of color, right? I'm Cuban, yeah. right? My okay. family, two of my family members got killed in uh, Castro's regiment. So it's a difference of opinion, whether it's people of color, white people, it's always about race. Our message isn't, today, our message wasn't about race. Our message has never been about race. What when you join message? our ranks, when you join our ranks, we don't ask you what, what race you are, what religion you are. We just, we just accept you for who you are. We have liberals in, a lot of liberals. There's actually one uh, prominent liberal that's here that's part of our ranks. Liberals would probably dispute that to say that you guys have a lot of liberals as a part of your group, um, and you call yourself male, male chauvinist, right? No, what does that I'm What does sorry. that mean? That's, that well, that was out. That's out there on. No, it's on, not. It, no, it's yes, not. it is. It's not male chauvinist. What and is your it? Viewers can watch that. Western, Western chauvinist. Western chauvinist. Okay. So Western can you chauvinist. Say, what can does you say that, that mean? That was false. That what you just said. No. What does that can mean? What is me What is a chauvinist? What do you mean? A chauvinist is somebody that's patriotic and extremely proud of their country. So you tried to twist my words and say that my group is a male chauvinist. There's a big difference. I'm letting you speak about it. No, you, so you accused I'm letting me you speak of being about it. No, I just said true. Western. No, you said, no, no, no. You said I male said male chauvinist. chauvinist. Then corrected myself. You said Western chauvinist. What does that mean? Yourself, a lot of people hear the word chauvinist and they think male chauvinist. They think of people. And what no. you say on the website and what you have heard from Gavin McGinnis, who created this group, is that this is for only for people with penises. That is literally yeah, what has been said. So isn't that so, a male? So let Chauvinist? me ask you something. So women's groups, women's rights groups that are all women, are they sexist too? 
they, they, are they there, are, there are women's groups who allow, like the women's movement, so the they women's want males club, to come the, out the and, and club, be... I'm sorry, the women's club, are they a sexist group? What women's club are you talking about? What are you referring to? The women's club, the National Women's Club, that only accepts women. Are they sexist? Let me ask you something. It's a men's group. It's a drinking club. Right, but that's what I'm asking you. You're saying Western chauvinists. Se celebrates women also. So it's something that celebrates men, but you say Western no, chauvinists, it right? it celebrates a traditional American family. It celebrates a male. It celebrates so, a female. So let me ask you something about the president. The president tweeted today that he is looking at the possibility of making Antifa a, a domestic terrorist organization. Yes. Should white supremacist groups also be considered the same? Yes, they should. They should, and they're right. Anybody that espouses violence or race, they should be labeled a domestic terrorist group, just like Antifa. And when you come out here, how do you how do you feel about the tweet itself? Is that something that's speaking directly to you? Because what the president didn't mention is that right-wing groups have also been violent. Yeah, and that's why I said the El Paso shooter. I just said it a little while ago. No, I'm talking about what you think of the president. He mentioned I, I one group. The president group. is in his right. It's one tweet. He's not going to mention every single group. Right now, the focus is Antifa. We've seen them firebomb. We've seen them attempt to firebombing in, uh, in Tacoma. We saw the Dayton, Ohio shooter uh, is is an Antifa member. So there's both groups. Right now, the focus is Antifa. Right, but they, there's, also what are, happened in, right. there's also what happened in El Paso, yeah. where the person was clearly a white supremacist with, with, with xenophobic ideas. What I'm asking you is, when you just pick one group and two groups are both involved no, in violence... No, focus on one group and focus on another. He went ahead and he called out the El Paso shooter, and he called out white supremacy. Do you not remember that tweet? Sure, I remember that tweet, okay, but perfect. I also... So we when, got white when, supremacy, he called right. out white... So basically, but in he a, called out in white a time, supremacy, and he called out Antifa. Perfect, But Both in sides. a time when the, the government here and the people here that live here are extremely concerned about what's going on, to have the president just pick one group when the right has he, also been arrested, well, well, and not to mention it... Weekend, would you be tweeting right now... Right now, you're not covering white supremacy, are you? You're covering, you're covering this event, right? So when El Paso shooting happens, he tweeted about El Paso. Today, the event is Antifa. So is it Antifa though that you guys were the ones that organized this yeah, event? That's great. So how is Did this anything Antifa? Go wrong with this event today? Nothing went wrong with Antifa either. Love Nothing it. went wrong with you guys. It has so far been peaceful. Is that what you plan on doing coming here? I guess the question I'm is why keep come here? here? As long as Ted Wheeler keeps pandering to Antifa and not calling him out by name. We're going to keep coming out here. We're going to keep wasting his resources. He's going to call all the agencies that he's called. He's going to call the National Guard, the FBI, all of those people. And we're going to keep coming out here until Ted Wheeler does something. What do you say to residents that say, we're paying taxes for this and you're just wasting our resources? Do they pay federal taxes like I do? All of them pay taxes. Perfect. Then this is just as my city as my, my home back in Miami. This is the United States of America. So you've and come here from apologize. Miami to I'm waste not, the resources of Portland. Wait, that wasn't our original intent. But you but just Ted said Wheeler, that's what it was. Now it is, obviously, because Ted Wheeler needed an axe to grind, and we weren't going to be that axe. So you're so going to keep showing up I'm going to keep showing up. Do, does it bother you at all that there are groups that, are, that, that feel... Let, let me just ask you this. Does it bother you at all that there are, there are folks here that feel that they have almost emotional terror, worrying that something's going to explode here, similar to what happened in Charlottesville? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I said, are you worrying about or do you care about the fact that there are people here in town that live here in Portland that are concerned about something exploding here, that something getting very violent and having their city explode, similar to what happened in Charlottesville in 2017? They went ahead and they have a concern. I have a concern also. My concern is domestic terrorism by leftist groups. But why do you keep so. coming to Portland? You're in Miami. Could you not do that there? I got, I, I don't know if, if you know what happened to me or your viewers know what happened to me. Last time I came to Portland, I got hit with an explosive and got shrapnel on my arm and leg. I'm sorry about that. That shouldn't okay. happen. You, so should, you shouldn't be injured and nor should so people sure on the other side be injured. Hit, then they go ahead and they they do the same thing. But I guess the question begs then why keep showing up? Because you know that that's going to engage them I, as well, I'm gonna correct? I'm going to simply say the reason why I keep showing up is because this is America. I have the freedom to express myself wherever whether I go to Michigan, whether I go to Florida, whether I go to Washington, whether I come to Oregon. Right now, I think the problem is in Oregon. Maybe you have a difference of opinion than I do, but it doesn't matter. We're going to continue to fight this fight against domestic terrorism. Whether Ted Cruz proposed uh, a, a piece of legislation to label them the domestic terrorists that they are. My petition on the whitehouse.gov got 40,000 signatures with zero platform. I don't have Facebook, I don't have Instagram, I don't have social media at all. That should tell you something. Other people get 100,000 signatures for regular stuff.
Enrique, I appreciate you talking to me. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Are you done? Is this over? We or? are actually moving. So, yes, today today's um, events are over. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank you. you talking to me. That was Enrico Tario uh, of the Proud Boys explaining why they keep coming here. And basically, at the end, he says, look, we're just trying to uh, whittle down and, and waste the resources uh, of Portland. That will make a lot of the residents here very unhappy to hear that. He says they're going to keep coming, and there is going to always be a reaction from the left. It happens every time. It is a way to engage them. Uh, that will not make the city happy. Anna. Sarah, a lot to digest there from your interview. I just want to be very clear, though. The Southern Poverty Law Center does classify that group, the leader of whom you were talking yeah. to, as a hate group. Yep. Um, and we know you're going to continue to try to understand what is the dynamic there on the ground and bring us any updates from Portland, Oregon.